This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for math analysis. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, continuity. Um, we talked a little bit about that already, and then we're going to be talking about the uh, intermediate value theorem. Um, so some more uh, calculus topics today. So when we're talking about um, continuity, we're talking about two different spots in a graph. So we're talking about an interior point. So a function y equals f of x is continuous at an interior point C of its domain if the limit as x approaches C of the function is equal to f of C. So the value of the limit is the value of the function at that point. And then at the endpoints, uh, the function y equals f of x is continuous at a left endpoint A or is continuous at a right endpoint B of its domain if the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x is equal to f of a. So coming at it from the right, or the limit as x approaches b from the negative side of f of x is equal to f of b. So we need to make sure that these uh, conditions um, exist uh, to determine the continuity. Uh, if a function f is not continuous at a point c, we say that f is discontinuous at C and C is a point of discontinuity of F. So just some terminology there as well. So when we take a look at this uh, example here we're given this graph of uh, F of X and we want to find the points at which the function F is continuous and the points at which F is discontinuous. So let's talk about where it's continuous. So continuous at so um, at uh, x is equal to 0, it's going to be continuous. And we know that because the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side, OK, so we're approaching 0 from the positive side, of f of x is going to be the value of the function at 0, which is 1. and Looking at the other endpoint, x is equal to 4, it's going to be continuous because the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of f of x is equal to f of 4. So we're approaching it from this side, which would also be, in this case, 1, coincidentally. And we also know it's uh, continuous between 0 and 4 except for a couple of different spots. So we would also say it's continuous when 0 is less than C is less than 4 where C does not equal 1 or 2 because we can see I have a discontinuity here and I have a discontinuity here. Alright so for all of these spots except for at 1 and 2 the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So it, depending on what kind of graph you have or what kind of function you have, it can be a little bit of a process to find um, where it is continuous and where it's not continuous or discontinuous. So with um, discontinuity, there's going to be three types there's going to be a removable discontinuity and really this is just a fancy uh, term for a hole and in this case we could have a limit that exists and we'll look at some examples of that or we could have non-removable discontinuity and uh, the two types of this would be an infinite discontinuity which would just be a vertical asymptote or we could have a jump discontinuity where there's actually a split in the graph All right, and in these cases the limit would not exist because um, for part A, the uh, limit would be approaching infinity, which is not um, some real number, real value L. And the jump discontinuity, the limit would not be the same coming from the left and the right. So uh, important note uh, as we go forward is that all polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. So a bunch of the examples are going to be based on polynomials, and um, it's important to keep in mind that they're continuous. So uh, some examples of types of discontinuities, and uh, we actually have one function that's continuous. Um, this first example here, um, this is actually continuous. 
this is continuous and then um, these next two graphs notice we have a hole here's a hole here's a hole these two are removable discontinuities okay both of these graphs are removable and then coming down to the next example we've got uh, the y-axis is an asymptote so this is an infinite infinite discontinuity and then over here we see that it splits so we have a jump discontinuity for that one okay so just a couple of uh, quick examples of what these would look like moving on to the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions <coughs> So a function y equals f of x that is continuous on a closed interval um, a comma b. So here's our closed interval from a to b. Takes on every value between f of a and f of b. In other words, if y sub 0 is between f of a and f of b, then y sub 0 is equal to f of c for some c in the interval from a to b. All right, so what does all this really mean? Well. the intermediate value theorem the IVT is what is known as an existence theorem okay so basically you know for this theorem if the function is continuous then we know that for uh, a domain between A and B there has to be some value C that's between it um, you know there has to exist these values between them if our function is continuous okay it has to exist and then also it tells us under what conditions C exists but it does not tell us how to actually determine the value of C. So we know that C will exist, but we, the theorem really doesn't tell us how to um, calculate or determine the value of C. So um, a couple of uh, real world type examples of this. Um, if between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. the temperature went from uh, 55 degrees to 70 degrees, by the intermediate value theorem we could make a couple of conclusions. We could conclude that at some time the temperature reached say 62 degrees this is just an arbitrary value of 62 degrees and we also know time is continuous all right at least in our dimension time is continuous uh, another example, if between his 14th and 15th birthday, a boy went from 150 to 165 pounds. Again, some conclusions we could make uh, based on the intermediate value theorem. At some point, he weighed, say, 155 pounds. Again, that's just an arbitrary weight in between 150 and 165. And also, this may have occurred more than once. Okay, so just a couple of um, real-world type examples there. 
let's move on to uh, another example. Given that f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 5, notice we have a polynomial, so it's going to be continuous everywhere. We want to show that f of x equals 0 has a solution on 1 comma 2. So basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at a 0 of the function. Okay, So we want to show that somewhere between 1 and 2 there is a 0 of the function. And remember, uh, if we think about a 0 graphically, this is a spot where it crosses the x-axis. So what we want to do is we want to first look at the value of the function at our value of a and b, so at 1 and at 2. So f of 1 is going to be uh, negative 4, so just substituting 1 in for x, we've got 3 times 1 minus 2 minus 5, so that's negative 4. And f of 2, substituting that in, that's going to be equal to 3. Now we notice that this value is less than 0 and this value is greater than 0. So somewhere between 1 and 2 our y values are going from negative to positive which means that we're going to have to have um, a 0 in there somewhere. So, so here's our first thing. We're going to check our endpoints to make sure we have a change of sign and then we know that f of x is continuous because it's a polynomial and we know that f of 1 is less than 0 which is less than f of 2 therefore by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a C such that f of C equals zero on the interval one comma so that will be the notation for uh, writing our answer there. So um, go on to the next video uh, to finish up these notes. It won't be very long. And then uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you're asking them. If you're uh, in class, feel free to pause uh, the video and uh, ask me straight away. Um, or uh, if you're not in class, make sure you write down your questions and uh, ask them the next time you see me. All right, we'll see you in the next video.